Hello, welcome back to metals in biology. Today we will discuss electron transfer in living systems and the book to follow is Principles of Bioinorganic Chemistry by Lippard and Bark. So a lot of schemes, figures are taken from this book and also the lecture notes of Professor Lippard. Okay. So as you know electron transfer is required to be happening in number of cases in our biological system. All of our biological system, one electron, two electrons, three electrons or even four electron processes are required. At a time only one electron transfer is usually preferred. Well, ele without electron transfer certain catalytic cycle cannot be completed. So therefore, electron the simplest reagent I would say plays a key role in many biological processes. Electron transfer as well as proton transfer usually they are coupled together and that is how they control the redox potential. Often we see that there are metals involved into these electron transfer processes. One of the major criteria that we will see today for the metal center containing electron transfer site is simply before and after electron transfer there should not be too much reorganizational energy. So the, the energy of the system before electron transfer and after electron transfer will remain almost constant. So therefore metal binding sites are designed in such a way so that they can minimize structural changes upon electron transfer. As I mentioned one electron transfer processes often occurs. So if let us say you need a multiple electron for a given system one electron at a time will be transferred not two electrons, three electrons or four electrons at a time will be transferred. Okay. So it is going to be a step wise electron transfer processes for the multi electron processes. Well, electron transfer can happen through bond or through space. In biological system often it is up to 11 to 13 angstrom distance can be covered for the, for, for the electron transfer processes. Okay. Of course, larger uh, electron transfer or longer electron transfer distance can be also possible. We might will not be discussing those too much, but it is also possible to transfer electron over long distances much more than 11 to 13 angstrom. A number of parameters is controlling the electron transfer rate that includes the distance between the origin and the delivery site, the driving force, reorganization energy and the path by which the electron transfer happening. So once again the distance between the donor and acceptor, the driving force and the reorganization energy before and after electron transfer, of course the pathway by which it is going or it is happening that is also will also vary. Today mainly we try to keep it very brief on the electron transfer processes on the iron sulfur clusters copper centers as well as the heme centers. So we will see a number of iron sulfur clusters are present for the electron transfer site or as a electron transfer site. Similarly copper centers can also participate in electron transfer. Of course these are all going to be the redox active metal center and that is why they are participating in the electron transfer processes. We can also have heme iron center participating just as electron transfer processes. One of the common thing for these electron transfer centers is they are not directly participating into the main reaction or the main process. If it is a synthetic transformation they are not actually involved into that except they just provide the electron. Okay. If 
it is just the electron transfer then only these species come into the picture otherwise they are not really involved too much of the synthetic chemistry or the chemical transformation that happens in the biological system. These are only electron transfer site. Let us look at some of the iron sulfur clusters. Well, these are the most popular one, these are um, include, these includes mononuclear iron center, dinuclear iron center, 3 iron center and 4 iron center. So, these clusters can be named in different ways, this is rubridoxin, this is ferrodoxin which has 2 iron cluster between the, it is bridged by sulphide as you can see over here for rubridoxin 1 iron center these are thiolate or cysteine bound iron center and um, for these cases iron is getting uh, oxidized to iron 3 and it is circling between iron 2 and 3 for the electron transfer processes. For these cases these are two I different iron centers and bridged by two sulphide of course the terminal ligands are also sulphur containing cysteine residue of the protein backbone. If you look at this one this is one of the age of the Q band is missing you have 1, 2, 3 iron center bridged by the 4 sulphide unit 1, 2, 3 and 4. Each of the iron center is also supported by the cysteine thiolate or S minus um, center. So, overall these are uh, quite fascinating center as well. So, we have finally 4 iron center bridged by the sulphide and also supported by the cysteine. Okay. So, these 4 iron cluster center also known as ferredoxin, 3 iron cluster center also known as aconitage and these are different overall charges that can uh, they can have during and after the electron transfer processes. Just one thing you must have noticed that these are very solid and uh, rigid structure, not too much is going wrong in this system. We will see that in a moment why these are so effective for the electron transfer processes. Well, before getting into that let me uh, discuss briefly on the rubridoxin which is a mono iron center. You have one iron and one, uh, one iron sulfur distance these are S uh, coming from this cysteine moiety iron sulfur distance any of these we are looking at. The bond distance is usually 2.25 to 2.30 angstrom and we are looking for the oxidized and the reduced form these are the two form by which the electron transfers are hap happening after electron transfer from uh, this site it gets oxidized to iron 3 and once again it accepts one electron and re-result re uh, re in iron 2 plus formation. Reduction potential is in the range of minus 50 to 50 millivolt for this sort of rubridoxin system. So, whenever this reduction potential matches and if these centers are available then these centers can actually provide one electron to the delivery center or the acceptor to the acceptor. As we were discussing there are 2 iron 2 sulfur center which are known as ferredoxin. Now, these the reduced form of this ferredoxin will contain iron 2 plus and iron 2 plus this is fully reduced form and the fully oxidized form would be uh, iron 3 plus and iron 3 plus uh, obviously there is a uh, state in between this reduced and oxidized form where one of the iron is in plus 2 state and another is in plus 3 state. So, this is for ferredoxin reduction potential for these processes vary from minus 490 to minus 280 millivolt. In this reduction potential range these, these iron sulfur clusters are operative. We have seen another one this cube missing corner 3 iron 4 sulfur ferredoxin. You have 3 iron 3 plus centers uh, 3 plus centers along with the S4, uh, S4 unit as, as you can imagine that this center can be reduced further this is completely oxidized form and this can be reduced to iron 3 2 and iron 2 uh, S 4. So, one of the iron is getting reduced to iron 2 plus reduction potential for this uh, for this system varies from minus 700 to minus 100 millivolt. 
we have seen 4 iron 4 sulfur also and that is over here that is also known as ferrodoxin and these are also high potential iron proteins and um, this, this settles between the 2 uh, sorry 3 iron 2 plus state and 1 iron 3 plus state it can be oxidized to 2 of them 2 of them being in iron 2 plus and 2 of them in iron 3 plus further oxidation of one of these iron 2 plus leads to only one iron 2 plus form being formed as well as iron 3 plus 3 of them is remaining ok. So, these are these are the um, iron sulfur clusters which are participating in the uh, in the in the electron transfer processes and their reduction potential varies from minus 60 uh, minus 650 to minus 280 millivolt region and uh, this is this is the this is the range where these uh, these four iron four sulfur cluster occurs but most importantly i think we we must realize that why these sort of cluster any of those clusters are very effective for the electron transfer process and that is precisely due to the fact that before and after electron transfer there is minimum reorganization energy involved during this process. So, before and after electron transfer things remain as much same as possible. For instance, if you see this is Fe4, S4, Sr4 minus and in these cases as you can see this is overall 1 minus charge if you add one more electron to this system. So, overall you get 2 minus charge if you add one more electron to this system overall you get 3 minus charge. So, 1 minus, 2 minus, 3 minus effectively these centers remain same. So, one more electron addition to this leads to this compound, one more electron addition to this compound leads to this compound. But irrespective of what electron transfer is happening, you see these iron sulfur bond just to pick up one of them, these are having crystal structure all three of them and this, is, this distance is iron sulfur distance is be, being noted as 2.233 angstrom, whereas after one electron reduction this distance uh, become 2.267 angstrom which is essentially meaning that this iron sulfur distance really did not change at all or nothing you cannot really say that there is any change and from there on if you add within one more electron these 2.267 angstrom distance between iron and sulfur changes to only 2.354 angstrom. So, virtually these iron sulfur distance remain constant throughout the process and therefore, despite these electron transfer processing processes happening in here, there is very little reorganization energy that is required from transforming one species into other. So, this is once again one of the key phenomenon for the electron transfer um, processes and electron transfer centers which are nothing but metallo enzymes, but these metallo enzymes remain so solid and so well organized that that um, electron transfer processes does not bother them too much. So, it remains a completely reversible process and they are able to do this chemistry effortlessly and that is what counts a lot ok. In often in nature the processes are so efficient and so simple that uh, that uh, synthetic chemist cannot even really think uh, so, so lightly about these processes ok. Well, we have uh, other centers. So far you have seen the iron sulfur clusters being the electron transfer site, but then it is not limited electron transfer is not limited to the iron sulfur cluster. There are many other centers. For example, there is this copper A center just build up of copper no iron sulfur over here just copper and sulfur as you can see each of the copper is having a 16 sul uh, sulfur linkage and uh, they are the bridging one these are the bridging one between the two copper center and one of the terminal is once again methionine which is a copper sulfur bond and the copper uh, pr uh, copper uh, copper um, um, keto uh, or uh, glycine uh, um, in intermediate also over there uh, as you can see each of them are are also at attached with histidine moiety overall it is a dimeric copper center which is which is bridged by the 16 moiety to 16 moiety and before once again before and after electron transfer this remains pretty much the same. So, the so the core of the structure 
did not change at all uh, uh, during and before and after the electron transfer processes. Okay. Not only these dicopper containing copper A centers are responsible for the electron transfer processes, there are other centers where also we can see that the major activity or the only activity they carry out is the is that of an electron transfer. Another this series of copper species or another type of copper species is called blue copper that you can see over here. Over here in the blue copper which is also known as type 1 copper center and uh, the, the, these are having 2 histidine and 1 methionine and 1 cysteine ligation at the copper center. So, this is tetra coordinated copper center and that is over here as you can see it is going to be tetrahedral in nature. So, this is blue copper center that is particularly because these complexes copper 2 complexes copper sulfur charge transfer absorption are quite strong and these charge transfer copper sulfur charge, charge transfer um, uh, is giving rise to the, um, the blue color of these species. Okay. This is a active site of ascorbate oxidase. Here not only one copper center, you have other total three copper centers are involved. Two of them are the bridging one which are bridged by the hydroxyl. These two copper center each of them are having three histidine in them and they are exchanging or communicating the spin through the hydroxy. So, the EPR spectrum of these actually um, become EPR silent due to the super exchange right. Now, antiferromagnetic coupling right these are uh, these are coupled through uh, coupled these two copper center uh, are coupled through antiferromagnetic exchange and therefore, the EPR becomes silent. And in addition to the type 1, so these are called type 3 copper center which are bridge with each other uh, or bridge, uh, bridge and communicated with uh, communicating with each other. There is yet another type of copper center which is known as the type 2 copper. Here you have uh, 2 histidine and 1 uh, OH, OH coordination from, from, the, from the protein backbone. Like overall then it is a it is a 3 different type of types of copper overall to total 4 copper these two are same this is different this is different. So, ascorbate oxidase is quite an interesting enzyme where you see 3 different types of copper center and overall 4 copper centers are there. It is also known as multi copper oxidase. So, these, these are capable of converting oxygen into water that is fascinating. We will see in some classes later that oxygen to water is one of the most fascinating reaction uh, known in the, in the domain of biological and bio inorganic chemistry. And this chemistry, this oxygen to water uh, transformation chemistry is quite complicated with these, with these uh, copper centers. They are remain um, controversy in this area. They are no uh, no generalized mechanism and uh, and that tendency can be supported by this ascorbate oxidase so far. So, much more study is required to get the uh, the details about uh, about the process wherein oxygen is converted into water by utilizing this copper center. Obviously, there are other uh, metal low enzymes which are also capable of converting oxygen into water. So one such species that is known so far or one such center that is known so far is methane monoxygenase we will discuss that later. Okay. Moving on, so as you have seen that uh, these copper centers are distinct. So, this is cop EPR spectra for copper hexa aqua complex and there is this type 1 copper that is for plastocyanin, this is type 2 copper center which are for copper zinc, uh, zinc superoxide dismute is mainly observed. The type 1 copper so far you have seen. So, um, these blue copper centers which are tetra coordinated as you have seen over there, these are having very distinct copper, uh, copper EPR as you can see over here. These three types of copper can be very easily distinguishable uh, by the EPR spectroscopy. As I was mentioning, this is for the blue copper, blue copper center that is the type 1 copper center over here and type 3 is EPR, uh, EPR silent and type 2 is the one we have shown over here. Now, this blue copper um, species also are very 
very active in, in the UV visible spectra where a strong absorption peak is observed and which gives rise to the blue color of, of, of this copper center and by, by these characteristics blue color one can easily pretty easily isolate this compound by simple column chromatographic technique. Okay. Moving on, uh, it is not only limited to the iron sulfur cluster, the electron transfer processes I mean, electron transfer processes as you have seen are predominantly controlled by the iron sulfur cluster, but there is also the copper center as you also have seen the copper A site and the blue copper site and, uh, and um, again one of the fascinating, uh, fascinating center for, the, for, for electron transfer processes, nothing else just the electron transfer processes is cytochrome C. Just to remind you this cytochrome C is completely different co uh, compared to cytochrome C oxidase which we will see later. This cytochrome C oxidase is, is the enzyme which participates in, in, in converting oxygen to water also, but then that is some for the discussion for some other day. Cytochrome C, this cytochrome C has only one heme iron center and their axial ligands are methionine and, and the histidine. These two ligands are axially attached with this heme iron center as you can see over here. So, the porphyrin heme iron in the middle from one axial site it is the methionine and from the other axial site it is the histidine that is bound with it. This is coordinatively saturated and this is why perhaps why it cannot react with oxygen. It does not react with anything, it is just acting as a stationary center for the electron transfer processes. It, the iron center gets oxidized and reduced that is it iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus for the electron transfer processes. So, in these centers, all these centers we have discussed so far iron sulfur cluster, copper uh, dicopper center and the dicopper cop center known as the copper A as well as the blue copper centers all and the cytochrome C all of them are capable of transferring one electron at a time and that is what they do contribute towards the active, active chemistry or active site chemistry of, of, of a given metalloenzyme that they are, that these are linked with. Of course, these, uh, these electron transfer sites are linked with a bigger transformation or bigger processes whenever or wherever that is happening. If you are looking at carefully, these centers are, are going to be a low spin center. Okay. So, you have a heme iron center and the, uh, two ligands are are there. So, it is a hexa coordinated heme center. If you, if you once again notice that these are also designed in such a way so that, um, so that the energy um, upon, upon electron transfer remains almost reorganization energy remain minimum or, or this minimum reorganization energy upon electron transfer essentially drives them for 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 the desired electron transfer process okay so there is there is the drawing for the protoporphyrin 9 for for your um, these uh, heme iron centers as you can see the, these are also having two axial centers as we have seen in the in the last slide where we, we, we see that a methionine and histidine is linked. So, these methionine and histidine linked iron center will be uh, nothing but the low spin. So, this is a very good ligand, porphyrin itself is a very good ligand, but in addition there is methionine and, and histidine which are strong fin ligand, all of them put together it would be a low spin iron complex, low spin iron 2 plus complex, it is a iron 2 plus is a D6 electronics configuration. So, T2 G6 to 2 electron H, if you are transferring an electron from these systems, so iron 2 plus is ox getting oxidized to iron 3 plus that would be low spin ferric. Overall then it, it is going to be T2 G5, it is a low spin and therefore you see that, um, that, that this electron remains in the T 2 G level, there is no transfer or uh, transfer of electron from the E G level and therefore, the change in the size or the overall reorganization energy is rather minimum for these short of centers. Once again, these can only act as one electron transfer processes at a time or these can participate in one electron transfer processes at a time and the main key important things to remember that 
they have the they have been evolved in such a way so that so that um, so that and uh, mini they they minimize the reorganization energy upon electron transfer okay so to sum up for this uh, for this uh, class today i hope you able to see that there are many different electron transfer site depending on the need and the reduction potential that is required for a given transformation. Um, we have seen different various iron sulfur cluster, let us say four, at least four different type of iron sulfur cluster you have seen which is participating in the electron transfer processes. There are one iron sulfur center, one uh, two iron sulfur center and three iron sulfur center uh, as well as the four iron sulfur centers. These structure as you have seen in the case of the Q band structure for the four iron four sulfur cluster, the crystal structure clearly shows that before and after electron transfer there is essentially nothing changing for these for these uh, cluster and therefore these rock solid character of this side before and after electron transfer make them most suitable uh, for, for these processes. There is no reorganization, almost no reorganization energy, reorganizational energy required for these processes and making them feasible, making the electron transfer feasible without much hassle. Not only the iron sulfur cluster, you have just seen the porphyrin iron center ligated with two ligand such as histidine and, and, and the methionine is also capable of transferring electron. This uh, center is called cytochrome C. In addition to that there is just copper or copper only system such as copper A and the blue copper center which are having characteristic UV visible and EPR spectra nonetheless these are capable of transferring one electron at a time and these are uh, these are pretty pretty good uh, pretty good electron transfer side and they are very much valued in the active site chemistry that we will see in the subsequent classes. Keep studying uh, and uh, once again the main book to follow would be uh, Lippard and Bag. You can read from any other book of your choice. Professor Kaim's book is also great. Please do keep studying from different chapters of these books. We will see you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>